Previously on Xyla Foxland. <sighs> I don't even know where to start. I found out I had to move out of my old apartment and my shop, but I'm back. This is my new space and it is all mine. <laughs> She's a monster! To the windows! <laughs> to the windows! Here at Foxland Industries, safety is number one. So, I am getting evicted from my shop again. I knew it would happen someday, but I didn't think it would happen today. I've had to move workshop four times so far. This is the third one you've seen on this channel. I now have this beautiful shop that I love to be in and I love to create in. This workshop is my literal dream. Anyone know how the heck to move a workshop? So yeah, that pretty much brings us to today. And a lot of you guys called it, but you were right. It did end up being a blessing in disguise because sometimes when life hands you lemons, it literally hands you lemons. Like glitter, come here, check this out. So not only, not only was the workshop an upgrade, but life also handed me the Meyer lemon tree of my dreams. And I have unlimited lemons and lemons are becoming my entire personality. Like you don't understand. I spent all of last summer trying to grow this tiny little baby lemon tree because I wanted to make lemoncello. And now I have unlimited lemons. So these are becoming my entire personality. If you want me to drop like a Meyer lemon recipe book or something, let me know in the comments. Zyla, come on, focus. <laughs> but lemon, okay, fine. Well, we'll go to the workshop. I'll show you. I moved and I have a new shop and you were right, it is better than the last one. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is BetterHelp, the world's largest online therapy service. While moving in the new life you're gonna have can be really exciting, it can also be incredibly stressful. It can feel really isolating, and, and some studies have shown it's a lot like grieving the passing of a loved one. You're grieving your past life, even if the move was for a good reason. And those feelings and the feelings you might be having about whatever's going on in your life, they're okay. And the next step is to find ways to take care of yourself. One of the ways to do this is by talking to someone. A big part of how I take care of my own mental health is by seeing a therapist that I trust. If you're still looking for a therapist, BetterHelp is an online resource offering access to over 30,000 licensed therapists. You get matched with a therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less, which is good for anyone dealing with anything super immediate. You can communicate with your therapist in a way that suits you best, text, phone calls, or video chats. And if you find that your first match isn't quite the right fit, there's no extra charge to switch therapists. I've always believed in the power of speaking to someone. It's my primary way of processing my emotions and dealing with life's challenges. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by life demands, like I am with my big move, or just need someone to talk to, know that BetterHelp is a tool that can be in your toolbox. Use my link betterhelp.com slash Zyla to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash Zyla. A huge thank you to BetterHelp for supporting this channel and sponsoring today's video. Now let's finish moving the shop. Before I show you around, let me uh, show you the moving process real quick and what this place looked like before I moved in. Let's go. This garage was in infinitely better shape than the last one when I moved in, so the only thing I really needed to do was to paint it white since this older off-white reads really poorly on camera and you know, I like film stuff for a living. But I couldn't do this without bringing back the legendary Lindsay herself from Woodbrain, who helped me remodel my last shop so incredibly. So as soon as I knew I needed to move, like Lindsay was actually the first person I texted. And I was like, no, we gotta do it. And she was like, I'll come help you. Um, so thank you, Lindsay, like always. And now it's spray time, which is basically Lindsay's time to shine. There's one sprayer and she is so much better than me at it. I don't know, I guess my channel's turning into like, Zyla doesn't have to spray paint on anything. Because my last video was like, Jason took away the sprayer and <laughs> you're bad at this. <laughs> so we're gonna give crayons to her, no paint. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get my crayon and sit in the corner and uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, she's so 
so good. Spraying is so satisfying. For huge areas like this, it makes a lot of sense. But like, do remember we spent all day prepping all the surfaces, taping things off, etc. And then the spraying itself is just like the dessert reward for all of that work. And then it was moving day. This ended up being a really chaotic dump of everything into the garage just to empty the moving truck so the movers could go since they work on an hourly rate. And then the rest of the week was spent just like slowly moving things into their spots. So basically the story with this shop is, it was like my landlord's father's dream shop. He, I think, I think the neighbor told me he spent $50,000 to build this building. He was a mechanical engineer, a woodworker, and an aviation enthusiast. So it kind of feels like fate that I found it. And they like, they had a hard time renting out this house because it's in like a very quiet, family-oriented neighborhood. Um, but the garage and the house are like the same size, which is perfect for me. Um, I could live in a trailer outside my shop like for all I care. Um, but now I get a shop, running water, and a lemon tree. So it's perfect, and a trailer. A place to keep the trailer. So she'll stop getting stolen. So yeah, it's been a busy couple months. Uh, and I honestly thought that I had to like get the shop totally perfect before making this video. But then I realized that if I did that, um, this video would never come out and you would probably never hear from me again. So the shop is a work in progress. It's not done. There's still a bunch of things I need to do. I don't really have a dust collector yet. I'm gonna try to put like heating and cooling in here because it's been freezing. Uh, and there's just like lots of little projects that still need to happen. Um, so yeah, that's your, your disclaimer. So let me show you around. Okay, so we'll start at the front. We have like everything you see in this shot is stuff I brought over from my old shop. I mean, almost everything in here I brought over from my old shop. So I have my table saw, I have my drill press, I have my air compressor, you know, classic shop stuff. Um, and then I haven't like populated this wall control yet because I haven't really figured out what the most useful tools to put here yet are. But like this is stuff that as I use the shop, we'll, I'll figure it out. I kind of want to rebuild this so that maybe the router table's in here. I don't know. This needs work. If anyone has suggestions for like a pretty high power dust collector, I do have 240 so I can run, it's 240 20 amp. Um, I wanna put it in this corner and then just run it down this, like a lot of the dusty tools on this side. Uh, but I've never like run a formal dust collector before. So if people have suggestions, please let me know. I'm a little in the dark there. Also, if there are any brands that like, maybe wanna work with me on that. I got you. <laughs> Karis is giving me a stink eye from behind the camera. <laughs> I will turn the cheesiness up to 12 for you. Here is pretty similar to actually my old shop. This workbench was part of the old house actually and I restored it and the fiduciary that was managing the property for the landlord's daughter um, told me I could keep it because they were gonna landfill it if I didn't. So. That was really nice of her. I'm really excited, I have my wall of Weeha, which is like kind of a life goal of mine. When I was in, in engineering school, all I wanted at, like ever in the world was Weeha screwdrivers. <laughs> and I could never afford them and no one ever got them for me as like birthday presents or anything. So uh, like I started working with Weeha a year ago and now look how many I have! They're so pretty. All right, this is little stuff. And then I like hang, hang stuff on the ceiling. I think this is really funny because the Tormach took up so much space in my old shop. Like it felt like it was like the biggest thing in the room. And now it's just like, oh, it's like another workbench. And I have, it has its own dust collector. And so now I was like, I may as well give this guy its own dust collector so that I can be using, like it can just be its own contained system. And this garage has 240 power. So I can actually use the vacuum bed on the Tormach, which I couldn't in my old shop because it needs 240. Over here, we have our flammables cabinet, sort of, just cabinet. Um, if you wanna send me a sticker to add to the cabinet, my PO box is down in the description below, and hopefully it'll get filled out. I think I'm going to WorkbenchCon this weekend, and it'll, I'll get a bunch more there. Also, I'll hopefully be at Maker Camp this year, and I'll be at Maker Central, so if you see me at any of those events, you can bring me a sticker, and then, oh, that's pretty organized. Carrot, did you work on that? Maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited. This here is my Bodle Tote store. All of my epoxy and glues and finishes and like all basically all my sticky stuff can be contained into this corner. And I can also put a fan in the window if I need to. If anyone wants to make me, by the way, like a neon Bodle Tote sign or like a glowing LED thing, uh, you know, 
My PO box is down below. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, the biggest thing, the new thing, the thing I built, the thing you're here for, is I built, finally, the four by eight workbench of my dreams. Okay, so I have always wanted a four by eight workbench. And then when we were at Jason's shop building that cosplay, Karis and I were both like, we need a giant workbench. Like this is game changing. You can put entire sheets of plywood on it. You can also just, projects can actually spread out. And when I was building that table right before I moved, I had no flat surface that I could just put the table on to work on it. So this was the first thing I did when I moved in. Um, like before the house was even really unpacked, I was building this workbench. Okay, I didn't fully film it because at first I thought I was just gonna build it from plans. So I like bought some plans on Etsy. I'll link them down below. They're really well-made plans, but they, I thought they were for a four by eight workbench and it was like a eight by 36 or something. It was like less, it wasn't a full four by eight. And so I ended up modifying them and then I ended up just throwing them away and doing it all from scratch. So I guess like if you want me to drop plans, I can, but I also feel bad because they're like, very loosely based on someone else's plans. So I don't really know. Um, but this here is the only section of cabinet that I used his plans for. It's like a drill storage thing. And because I made it a lot deeper, I actually have like excess screw storage in the back. And then I have this drawer that's got a bunch of my other hand tools in it. Okay, this here is my sanding quadrant. I'm really excited about this one. So it took forever to figure out how I wanted to organize sanding stuff. And I had these bins at my old shop, but it's basically like, these are art bins. I'll link them down below. And so this is for my five inch and my six inch orbital sander. And then here's all my Festool paper. And then this is all like my tape. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what this is called. The, the sanding tape stuff. And then I have, you know, like mouse sanding paper in this one, etc. Used, I keep all my used sandpaper and like use it until it's truly dead. Uh, and then like lots of hand sanding accoutrements to so like sanding pads, things I'm grabbing all the time are in here. Uh, and then I have my orbital and my mouse sander in here. And in this one is like my belt sander and then my bigger orbital. So. This is just like all the sanding stuff in the one place it needs to be, which is really nice. And then on this side. Over here, I have my scrap bins. So I have plywood scraps, lumber scraps, and then this is just like short scraps, but you know, I want to like that you can pull them out, grab what you need. And then we also just like have this drawer here for pens and pencils and knives and tape measures and other stuff. And then here is another, on this side I have tape. So if you come here, you can see that I've got just like little bits of plywood holding things in and like a nice organized tape drawer. And I have my Dremel stuff on this side. I'm still, I haven't fully figured out how I want to organize this drawer, but this drawer, this drawer is hot. This is some X-rated drawer organization here. So I have over here, my router stuff, so my router wrenches like fit nicely into these two slots and so they won't wander off as much, hopefully. And then all my router bits are in these handy little organizers and they're all laser cut labeled. And then I have my hand router on this side, the plunge, plunger thing on my bobber, angle grinder, oscillating saw, and then my, my power planer here. So this is all just like, oh, it's so organized and I love it. Uh, and then this is my Arbortech drawer. So all of my power carving stuff is in here. And since Arbortech comes with these like amazing boxes anyway, I didn't feel the need to build a separator. I, um, I don't even think I need to describe it. Look, you want some number 10 one inch wood screws? I, oops, I got you. You want some number 10 one and a half inch wood screws? I also got you. You want some number eight two inch wood screws? Man, do I got you. And do you want some Cadbury eggs? I also got you. Um, but for real, oh, now I have to crunch too. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I'm super excited to have all my screws here. These bins are big enough to take like one standard small box of screws. So like I go through one and a quarter inch construction screws like nobody's business. And so yesterday when I was using them, I just like took the bin over there and then when this gets empty, I can just refill it from my huge tub of them. Really proud of this. Because I, 
The plans for this workbench told me to just like cover this with plywood to make it look nice. And I was like, that's so much wasted space. So I skipped all the plywood covering, which would make it look nicer. Um, and I put this in here and I'm so pathetic. And this whole thing is on wheels and it's really heavy, but the wheels are good enough that like, I can move it around on my own. Uh, that's part of the thing that like, I've struggled with designing workshops. I think a lot of the people I look up to and who have like really great workshop build videos and stuff are massive and twice my size and can lift three times heavier than anything I can lift. And so I have to like design my spaces for like, do I have leverage to get something in here or can I move everything around? So, and like the other modification I made to these plans other than like everything was I also shortened it. So it's like an inch shorter than a standard workbench because I am like six inches shorter than a standard woodworker. So, you know, come at me, Jackman. Jackman raised all his workbenches by like six inches and I'm lowering them. So I think the biggest project I want to do next with the shop is I want like a clamp cart where all of my clamps can be on a rolling cart because at my last place they were all like on a wall, which was great. They were super organized, but like every time I needed them somewhere else, I'd have to make a million trips back and forth. So I want to make a clamp cart, but I haven't fully I haven't found like designs I can just steal yet, so I'm probably gonna design my own. Let me know if you would want that as like an actual video. So yeah, thank you for your patience, thank you for bearing with me, and welcome to the new uh, Foxland Industries. See you next time. Bye, you're following me. Ma'am, this snack bin, Death of me. Whoever Mike Cozy something on Instagram. Darn you!